Okay, so Chef Payne and I are gonna demonstrate making up some rolls and stranding some braided looks. We made the egg bread, modified straight dough method, and we've portioned it into two ounce portions for your rolls and three ounce portions for your braided strands, for your loaves. As a reminder, when you are rounding, when you're portioning and rounding, you wanna make sure you get a nice, tight grip on your dough. So this would be just for a roll, okay? Nice, smooth roll. I've got some bigger portions here that would make a boule and a batard. So we've rounded it and rested it. Pretty side's gonna go down. I'm just gonna bring my edges in, turn it back over, and just give it a nice, tight surface of gluten that'll trap that CO2. So those, just two different sizes. The second size would be good for like, um, to hollow out for a soup bowl. This is for a batard, a pretty popular shape. Also starts from a rounded, rested portion of dough, pretty side down. And I'm just gonna dimple it to extend it. Firm, but gentle, might sound like an oxymoron. And I'm gonna bring my top edge down. I'm gonna bring my wings in. And then the bottom up over the top. It's gonna look a little bit like an empanada. Is that an empanada? Kind of what it looks like, yeah. Okay. And then I'm gonna take my hands to force a tapered shape, sort of like a football. If you find that you're a little inconsistent looking, I'm gonna just switch the sides that I'm pressing on because I have my right hand is stronger than my left hand. And this is what a batard looks like pre-proof and bake, just an elongated shape, a little bit like a football. Okay, so we're gonna move to shaping some rolls. And if Chef Pam would like to show you some samples we've already constructed for you, and a little sheet of paper that we'll be able to use uh, as a reminder when you all are in lab and producing these for yourselves. So I've got a single knot, a double knot, a figure eight, and a braided roll. And I have some larger portions and those larger portions we will use for our um, loaves. So what we've done is we've stranded out some portions of dough. These are our two ounce portions. And you want them as consistent as you can get them so that your rolls are consistent looking. And I don't like to roll over the ends because it'll taper your loaves and it leaves sort of this pointy um, shape and it's, I just don't think it's visually as desirable. So to make a single strand, a single knot, I hold it in my hand or I can put it on the table to do it. But what I'm trying to do is just get up over the end of one side of it and under through the hole that's left. It lo should look similar on both sides. If it looks like a pretzel, kind of get it into a round shape before you put it over onto your parchment line and spray sheet tray, you want to make sure to spray your paper so that your dough does not stick. As it's growing in the oven, it has a tendency to stick onto the parchment if it's not sprayed. So this is a double knot. I need a little more extended piece of dough. And I'm going to start in the bottom half of this dough and I'm gonna put in that would be a single knot if you didn't see the tail, right? So I'm gonna start with a single knot in the bottom portion of this strand, and then I'm gonna bring the tail up and through this space that I've held open with my finger. Again, like the single knot, it should look similar both top and bottom. Okay, so now we're gonna do the figure eight. To me, it looks like a little Indian in a papoose. You need a little bit longer strand, about the same length as the double knot. And you start by holding the top portion of the strand. I'm gonna make sure that I keep a good grip on this top part, because I'm gonna wrap the strand around the top of it and put the tail in through this space that I'm holding open with my finger. And, and when you flip it over, it should look similar, just like the other ones. So that's a little figure eight. The last roll, we're gonna demonstrate is 
the braided roll. It is similar to the figure eight, but it has an extra twist in the bottom. With the figure eight, I started at the top of the strand. With the braided one, I'm gonna start in the middle. So I'm gonna bring my strand to meet about the middle. So the end of the strand meets about the middle. It looks like a six, okay? I'm gonna bring the tail through. My fingers are holding that space. I'm gonna bring that portion to the left. I'm gonna turn the strand to the left, and then I'm gonna tuck the tail into this bottom portion. So it just has a little extra crisscross here at the bottom. So these are our braided rolls. The next few items are gonna be um, using the three ounce portions of dough and we have stranded them out. And I have a ruler because I try to keep you all from getting these too long, otherwise they're gonna be like a breadstick and not a, not a loaf. So I wanted, want these at about 11 inches and then tapered. So once they're tapered, they're closer to 12 inches. And we've done this with enough dough to demonstrate a two strand, three strand, four strand, and then you'll have some nice braided shapes in your repertoire. So I'm gonna start with the two strand. It's pretty basic. What you do is you cross over two strands of dough like so. Make sure they're closer to the same length. Cross them over like this and you take the bottom portion and you just pass it over. And they're passing each other, not crossing. Same with this portion of dough. And at this point, you can kind of get, you can kind of hold it with your fingers, bring all of them to me. And it's sort of a little tapered guy like this, or you can bring it around it and make it sort of a, a round braided loaf. Tuck that guy in. So, we're gonna put that little double braid like that. This next one is gonna be the three strand. You all did the three strand in uh, baking one. So I'm gonna strand these out. And this is just like braiding hair. Strand it out, taper my ends. Got some CO2 in these strands. If you do, just give it a little pinch. And I'm going to rest these beside each other and I'm gonna start with one of the outside strands. So if I just bring them together at the top, I'm gonna to start with my right hand side and I'm gonna place it in between the two still on the table. And I'm just gonna alternate by selecting the opposite outside strand. Now once you get really fast, you can just kind of crank through it. And you may notice that I've got some room in here, and that's intentional because he's gonna proof, he's gonna double in size in the proofing, and then he's gonna double in size in um, the oven. So that's your three strand, and that should be pretty familiar to you all. And now we're gonna finish up with a four strand. With the four strand, you're gonna count the positions of the strands on the table. One of the most important things to remember is that you've got to get this top braided really well, because you don't wanna to have to come back to the top portion and rebraid it since we're counting positions, strands positions. So this is position one, two, three, four. And it's a sequence of numbers that will help you to remember this braid. It's four over two, one over three, and then two over three, or I say twist. So I'm gonna start with four. I'm gonna place it over two, right? Now I'm gonna take my number one. I'm gonna bring him up real tight up top here so I don't have to come back. That's really important. And then I'm gonna twist or it's two over three. And then I'm gonna repeat that sequence. So here's four four over two, 
one over three, and then twist and repeat. Four over two, one over three, twist. And you wanna also, just like the three strand, leave it some room so that it can proof without shearing. So four over two, one over three, twist, four. And then when you get to the bottom, you make sure it's nice pinch tightly. And what you're looking for with this strand is this roping that continues all the way down. I'll give you a little other view. So we're gonna pinch it, tuck those under. And so now when this proves, you'll have a nice big fat loaf that you'll be able to uh, slice from and toast. So here are our shapes. We've got just a regular roll, a boule, a batard, single knots, double knots. We've got the figure eight, the braided loaves, the two strand, three strand, and four strand. 